what is going on everyone welcome back to another video today we are going to be doing a car crash simulation using the explicit dynamics module in ansys let's get into it so just a couple things that i wanted to mention before we set up the simulation so we understand the problem that we're solving in the simulation so first thing, we have two different geometries in this simulation. We have the car and the wall, both of which are modeled using surface bodies. This allows for the simulation to use less computational power and still give a very accurate result. As far as materials go, the frame of the car is going to be aluminum and it's going to be striking a structural steel wall. As far as boundary conditions go, the car is going to have a velocity of 28 meters per second, which is roughly equivalent to 100 kilometers per hour. And we're going to initialize free displacement in the X and Z directions. And in the Y direction, it's going to have zero displacement. And this just ensures that the model of the car stays at a leveled height and is allowed to warp and move in the plane which it is translating on. The wall is going to be fixed with a fixed support, and we are going to run this analysis for 0 0.01 seconds, which if the car was traveling at 28 meters per second, would give a distance traveled of 0.28 meters or 28 centimeters. And the reason why the analysis time is so short is because we are using the explicit dynamics module, which capture complex and highly nonlinear behavior such as deformations high plasticity or compact impact events, uh, such as the car crash, which is a high speed impact event, which induce a lot of stress waves and rapid changes in momentum. And the explicit dynamics module is a great tool in order to capture these rapidly changing phenomena. And also in explicit dynamics, the time integration scheme is generally much more straightforward and requires less computational power uh, to solve problems of such short duration using an implicit method would require an iterative solver, which is much more time consuming, is much more computational intensive, and requires much more user input to ensure stability and convergence. Therefore, we will use explicit dynamics for this simulation. On the right hand side at the top, we can see the geometry that we are going to be using for the simulation. As I mentioned, two surface bodies, one for the car and one for the wall that the car is going to be hitting. And in the bottom right here, this is the results that we should obtain from running the simulation for the equivalent bond misses stresses. And we can see from this figure here that the car is hitting the wall. And as a result of the aluminum not being as strong as the structural steel, the car frame is crumpling due to the impact. So now we know how we're going to set up this model, the geometry, the boundary conditions, and the analysis time that we need for this simulation and what the expected results are, we can go ahead and jump into Workbench and get started on this simulation. So now that we are in Workbench, we can go ahead and start working on this simulation. In the middle here, I have my project schematic. This is where we are going to be building the simulation. And on the left-hand side here, I have all of these analysis systems that I could use. But for this simulation, as I mentioned, we are going to be using the explicit dynamics module. So I'll grab the explicit dynamics module and drag it into my project schematic. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add the aluminum alloy as a available material for the simulation. By default, Ansys always uses structural steel, but we need to add the aluminum alloy as an available material to use. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and open Ansys library of materials by double clicking on engineering data. As we can see at the top here, this opened up a new tab. So if we click on the project tab, this goes back to where we were building our project. And if we press on the engineering data tab, this is the material library for all the materials that are by default within ANSYS. And if we press on engineering data sources, we could browse through all the materials available to us. So I'm going to go ahead and press on general materials, which opens a general material library. In the second window in the middle here, these are all the materials within this library and so i'll scroll up to see aluminum alloy to add it to our project we're going to press on the plus in column b here and if we scroll back up we can see that there has been a book added beside the plus sign and this means that it has been added to our project to be used and if i scroll down we can see that structural steel already has the book beside it so that is already available in ANSYS because it's the default material for all the simulations. So now with all of our materials added we can go back to the project schematic by pressing on the project tab and now I'm going to add the geometry that I have created for this simulation. 
So to do this, I'm going to right click on geometry and I'm going to go to import geometry. And I'm going to press on browse. As we can see here, I have a file called car crash ansys. So I'm going to press on car crash ansys and open this geometry. And so now we can see we have a check mark beside geometry, meaning that the geometry is ready to go for the simulation. And we could move on to the meshing stage and the boundary conditions, but I'm going to open up space claim to show you guys what the geometry is that I'm working with. So I'm going to double click on geometry. And in the bottom left corner, we can see that it says starting space claim. So I'll wait for that to load. Now the space claim open, we can go ahead and view the geometry that I've created for this simulation. As we can see in the structure tree, there is two components for this geometry. We have one for the car body and we have one for the wall. If we go ahead and open the drop down menu beside each of the components, we can see that we are using surface bodies for this simulation. Surface body means that the components do not have a thickness. So if we go ahead and press on the Z axis here, we can see that this wall doesn't actually have a thickness and it's just a plane and the car itself as well. We have surfaces that go around the entire car, but the walls of the car don't actually have a thickness to them. When we move on to mechanical to do the meshing and boundary conditions, this is where we are going to specify the thickness for our bodies. And there are a couple of reasons why we do this. First off, it will more accurately capture the physical behavior of the bending and in-plane behaviors of the thin wall structures during the crash. Using surface bodies also reduce the computational load that is required to run the simulation. The surface bodies also allow for an easier meshing to occur. If we were to use solid bodies, it's very possible that our meshing becomes very complicated, which would greatly increase the amount of computational power that you need to run the simulation. So as a result of using surface body, not only does the meshing become easier, but it also reduces the amount of computational power that you need to run a more accurate simulation. Having had a look at what the geometry that we are going to use for the simulation and the benefits of using such a geometry, we're going to go ahead and close space claim and move on to the meshing and boundary conditions and actually run the car crash simulation. So we're going to go ahead and press on the big X on space claim to close space claim. We're going to go back to our workbench. And as I mentioned before, we have a check mark beside geometry. So we are ready to move on to the meshing stage. So I'll double click on model. And in the bottom left corner here, it says starting mechanical. So I'll wait for that to load. So now with mechanical loaded, we can go ahead and start building the rest of this simulation. First things first, we can see that we have a question mark beside geometry. So let's go ahead and click on the surface components to see what is going on here. As we can see in the details of component one of the surface, we can see that we have a yellow field. Since we are using surface bodies that don't have a thickness, by default, the thickness would be zero. But physically, this is not a possible option. So this is where we are going to specify the thickness for our bodies. So as we can see by pressing on component one, this highlighted the car body. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a thickness of 0 0.005. And this is just an arbitrary value that I chose to give my body a little bit of thickness. Evidently, the thicker the model, the harder it will be to deform. And we can see that down here, the material assignment by default was structural steel. In the problem statement, as I mentioned, I want to use the aluminum alloy as the frame of my car. So I'm going to go ahead and press on structural steel. I'm going to press on the triangle beside structural steel to drop to use the drop down menu. And I'm going to choose aluminum alloy from the tree. So now aluminum alloy has been assigned as my material for component one. And I'm going to go ahead and press on component two. As we can see, it highlighted the wall here. And again, the yellow field means that ANSYS is waiting for user input and we can't have a thickness of zero. So I'm going to go ahead and initialize the thickness of the wall to be 0 0.025, which again is just an arbitrary value that I chose to give my wall a bit of thickness. And the material assignment is structural steel. So that is good to go. Next up, I'll move on to the meshing of this geometry. I'm going to go ahead and generate the default mesh from ANSYS. So to do that, I'm going to right click on mesh and press on generate mesh. And as we can see, the mesh that ANSYS has created is fairly coarse. But since we're only looking at the overall behavior of how the car is going to interact once it's impacted the wall, this mesh will be plenty good to capture this detail. Now, if we wanted to capture very fine details of specific crumple zones in the car, then we would probably need to refine the mesh much more than this. 
However, to double check to ensure that this mesh is going to be good for the simulation, we can go ahead and check its quality. To do this, I'm going to press on the plus beside quality here. And in mesh metric, I'm going to press on none. I'm going to press on the little triangle that appears to use the drop down menu. And I'm going to go ahead and press on element quality. As you can see, we have our mesh metrics that appears in the bottom here, which gives a little bar graph. And we can see that the majority of our elements are within this last column here, being the highest percentage for element quality. And this just means that our elements are not skewed and very orthogonal. So if we go ahead and press on the column here, this just shows us all of our very orthogonal and very square elements in our mesh. And we can see that it makes up the majority of the body. If we go ahead and press on one of the columns down here, which is our more skewed elements, we can see that there are only a few elements that are very, very skewed. So if we were to run into problems in our simulation, these would be the elements that we would have to look out for and maybe refine these areas so that the meshing conforms a little better at these places. But overall, since we have a very orthogonal mesh and most of our elements are very square and there's not many problematic areas that could occur, this mesh should be very suitable for this simulation. With a good mesh created for the simulation, let's move on to the conditions needed to bound this simulation. First things first, I wanted to give a initial condition for this velocity to have a car of 28 meters per second. To do this, I'm going to right click on initial conditions. I'm going to go to insert and press on velocity. As we can see down here, we have a couple of yellow fields, which means that ANSYS is waiting for user input. So we need to select a geometry. To do this, I'm going to go ahead and press on the body selector tool up here. I'm going to select my car body here and where it says no selection, I'm going to click on no selection and press on the apply button that has appeared. So now we can see that one body has been added to our geometry for our velocity. Next up is defining the actual velocity. Instead of using a vector, I'm going to go ahead and click on vector and use the drop down menu to specify components instead. And we can see that the car is pointed in the X direction in the coordinates here to move towards the wall. So I want to specify my velocity, my 28 meters per second in the X direction component. And I'm going to leave the other components zero. So with the velocity of the car initialized, let's move on to the boundary condition of the car, which is to specify that it can only move in the X and Z directions, but it cannot move in the Y direction. So to do this, I'm going to right click on explicit dynamics. I'm going to go to insert and press on displacement. As we can see, I need to specify my geometry and in what coordinates I want my body to be free in. For the geometry, I'm going to go ahead and use the edge selector tool up here. I'm going to rotate the body. And using control, I'm going to go ahead and select all of the bottom edges of my car around its perimeter. So holding control and clicking on the edge that I want allows me to select more than one edge. As we can see, all of the edges that I've selected have highlighted green. So to add it to my geometry, I'm going to go ahead and press on the apply button. And now for the coordinates I want my geometry to be free in is the X and Z coordinates. So I'm going to go ahead and leave those ones as free. But in the Y component, I'm going to go ahead and insert a zero. And this just ensures that the body cannot move in the Y direction. And so why are we selecting the edges for this displacement? Well, I still want my panels on the bottom of my car to be able to translate in the Y direction because I, will, I still want them to crumple. However, since the car is heavy, it would be unrealistic that when the car hits the wall, the whole car starts moving in all directions. So now with the boundary conditions of the car in place, let's go ahead and plug in the boundary conditions for the wall. To do this, I'm going to right click on explicit dynamics again, go to insert and press on fix support. 
as we can see, we need to specify a geometry for the fixed support. So I'm going to go ahead and use the edge selector tool to select the three edges by holding control on my wall here. And I'm press on apply to apply the three edges to my fixed support. Next thing, we can see that we have a check or a question mark beside analysis system. I'm going to go ahead and press on analysis system. As we can see, we have a yellow field. So this is specifying the end time for the simulation, which in the problem statement I said would be 0.01. And because the car is moving at a velocity of 28 meters per second, this means that with this end time, uh, the car has only traveled a distance of 28 centimeters. But within this 28 centimeters, the car will be able to impact the wall and have a pretty severe collision with it. And by using this small analysis time and using the explicit time integration, it will allow us to capture the complex and plastic behaviors of this model. Next up, we're going to go ahead and specify the solutions that we want to get from ANSYS for the simulation. To do this, I'm going to go ahead and right click on solution, go to insert, go to deformation and use directional deformation. Down in the details of directional deformation, we can see that we have the deformation in the X axis. So that will give us the deformation of the car and the wall in the direction of the X axis. And I'm going to go ahead and insert also the total deformation to see the deformation in all the directions. I will also right click on solution and insert the equivalent von Mises stresses. And I'll also go to insert solution, insert and go to strain and insert uh, equivalent plastic to see the plastic strain. So now with all the solutions that we want to see for this simulation and all the boundary conditions in place, we can go ahead and actually solve this simulation. To do this, I'm going to right click on explicit dynamics and press on solve. And if we click on solution information here, we can see the solver output and we can see that the solution will start writing all of the time stepping that it is doing. And we can see that there is a little clock here where we can see the remaining time for the simulation and how much time it will take. Since we used a fairly coarse mesh, it will not take a lot of time for this simulation to load and it has already loaded. Now that our simulation is done calculating, we can go ahead and check the solutions that we got. I'm going to go ahead and press on equivalent stress to see the equivalent stress of this model. As we can see, the car has impacted the wall. We can use the little play button beside the animation to see the car hitting the wall and the crumple zone occurring at the hood of the car. A couple things to note for the results that we've gone from the simulation. First things first, we can see that the boundary conditions are being respected. The fixed support of the wall is good because the wall is not moving at its edges. We can see that there has been a little bit of stress in the wall as a result of absorbing the kinetic energy from the car, but the wall itself is not moving and staying in place. We can also see that the car itself is not moving in the Y direction because we restrained it from moving in this direction, but we can see that the elements or the panels of the car are freely moving in all directions. So that is good and unexpected result since the structural steel is a much stronger material than the aluminum alloy. The hood of the car is deforming a lot more than the structural plate that we are hitting. So by doing a results validation, we can go ahead and conclude that the results that we obtained are fairly accurate. And that will be it for this simulation. Don't forget to like the video if you guys thought it was helpful and subscribe for more engineering content.